Hello everyone and welcome to an absolutely amazing game from day one of the World Blitz Championship. It's uh, Javokar Sindarov uh, of Uzbekistan versus Shakriar Mamedyarov and it really seems Uzbekistan uh, is going very strong in both the World Rapid and Blitz Championship. Uh, this game features the greatest opening uh, chess um, uh, has ever known so uh, be ready for that uh, and also sorry about showing you the wrong standings. In the previous video I showed you the standings after 11 rounds. Uh, after this game uh, we will also check out the standings after uh, round 12 so so let's check out the game first and then we're gonna enjoy the standing so Sindarov with the white pieces opens with e4 we have e5 by Mamedyarov knight to f3 knight to c6 and the bishop to c4 uh, Mamedyarov goes for bishop to c5 we have the Joko piano and now uh, you guys are always wondering will it happen well here it did happen here Sindarov uh, played b4 the Evans gambit is on the board and what happened the next uh, surprise me even more than uh, him playing the Evans Gambit, Mamedyarov declines the Gambit. He plays Bishop to b6. And um, in, uh, for example, in uh, top tier tournaments in, uh, you know, uh, play where, where good players are, are playing, there are about uh, 3,000 and some maybe 200 games in the database where the pawn is accepted, and there are only about 500 games where the pawn uh, is declined. So here, uh, it's questionable why Mamedyarov declines the uh, the sacrifice maybe he wants to confuse his opponent maybe he has some greater knowledge than we have that maybe nowadays uh, supercomputers have decided that maybe bishop to b6 is better even though our standard engines uh, just say you know captured the pawn uh, or he never studied the evans gambit and he doesn't dare accept uh, the uh, the b4 pawn uh, be that as it may let's see what uh, what happens next we have a4 uh, threatening a5 to trap the bishop while still offering the b4 pawn but accepting the b4 pawn now uh, would be basically the same as accepting the Evans Gambit, only white would get a better position than in the original acceptance of the Evans Gambit. If he goes knight capture some b4, we play a5, and only after the bishop moves we get c3, knight c6, and d4. And you, you are basically playing the Evans Gambit accepted with, um, well, some improvements uh, for white. For example, captures, captures, bishop to b4 check, uh, and uh, white can even play king to f1, you don't even have to block this. You can play bishop d2, but you can also play king to f1, and it's a really really tough position to play for black how do you develop uh, this uh, knight knight to f6 for example can be met with e5 queen to b3 is coming all, all very nasty if you try d6 first to prevent e5 uh, we play d5 and we win the game on the spot so it's a really really tough position to play you can't capture here uh, because just queen to a4 check picks up the bishop uh, but the same applies if you if you just move the knight queen a4 check picks up the bishop so uh, it's not uh, possible to, to accept the pawn now if you wanted to accept the pawn you should have done it um, uh, much much sooner so a6 Mamedyarov uh, frees up the a7 square for the bishop knight to c3 and now knight to f6 we have castles and d6 and Mamedyarov is very happy now he has his a6 bishop to b6 uh, d6 e5 setup and uh, well no worry in the world we have knight to d5 uh, attacking the bishop on b6 and Mamedyarov trades here we have captures captures attacking the knight here and again uh, the b4 pawn is uh, kind of being offered here but uh, again capturing it now just runs into a5 and again uh, what do you do with the knight now once you move the bishop uh, we can play some like bishop to a3 and that's pretty much it there's not nothing you can do there are no squares available for this knight if you try something like c5 then we just trap it with c3 and again the the, the story repeats itself so knight to d4 and now knight captures on d4 bishop captures on d4 and c3 uh, we have bishop to a7 and now d4 so white getting the the very well-known setup we have castles by black if you don't castle now you probably never will uh, d captures on e5 d captures and now uh, interestingly uh, and i i don't know how this is even possible but uh, uh Sindarov, uh, played the exact game way ye already played against mamedyarov uh, in the fide world cup 2013 that ended in a draw where Wei Yi played bishop to e3. But here Sindarov improves with queen to e2 and it is now only as of move 14 that we have a completely new game. So it's like he, know, uh, uh, I mean of course you prepare for uh, your opponent, you prepare openings, but to know the exact game and it, it's not like you know that you're gonna face Mamedyarov in a tournament with 200 people. So uh, Sindarov knows uh, many many games by heart to, to be able to uh, m memorize this. Uh, or I, I would really be surprised if, if it 
was a coincidence uh, or maybe he just had enough time to prepare this before the actual round but either way it's very very impressive so here attacking the pawn this comes with a threat uh, unlike Wei's bishop to e3 and now queen to h4 uh, you can't capture the pawn just yet because the bishop on c4 would be hanging so bishop to e3 uh, and now bishop to g4 uh, attacking the queen so queen to a2 now the bishop is still defended so black doesn't have any nasty discoveries and now a5 uh, striking at this b4 pawn but uh, if you remember we are playing the Evans Gambit decline so white shouldn't really have any problem giving up the b4 and c3 pawn because that's what you kind of do in the Evans Gambit accepted so here bishop captures an a7 rook captures and now uh, a very impressive f4 uh, asking black what do you do here uh, white is threatening to pick up the e5 pawn and have a massive pawn center here if, if you capture this for example captures rook captures again a very tough position for black the queen just being here the queen bishop rook uh, uh, attacking that f7 pawn the other rook is coming to f1 black will not be able to defend this so instead after f4 uh, Mamedyarov continues uh, with a captures on b4 uh, we have f captures on e5 and now b captures on c3 so uh, you know some 20 moves later uh, Mamedyarov uh, accepts the Evans gambit uh, and now we have e6 uh, beautiful play by by Sindarov we have bishop to h5 now defending the f7 square and now rook a to e1 now threatening to create a pass pawn here and well you could just play something like rook back to a8 and it seems like the safest choice Mamedyarov plays b5 it seems like uh, all this pawn giving from white um, convinced Mamedyarov that maybe he should give up some pawns on the queen side as well although there is no good reason to do this it's a, it's a very odd move of course the knight cannot capture so Sindarov captures with the bishop it does get the bishop off of this diagonal so that's probably why Mamedyarov did it and now he even played c6 he gave up another pawn uh, which only allows Sindarov to create a passed c pawn which he does now we have f captures on e6 and now queen captures on e6 with check uh, we have bishop to f7 the rooks are nicely guarding the bishop here and now just queen back to e3 and now if you look at the position uh yes white is up a pawn so uh he he played the Evans gambit Mamedyarov declined it and then he sort of accepted accepted it later on in the game and now it's Mamedyarov who, who is down a pawn uh, but not only that white has two pass pawns here that are nicely defended by the bishop so uh, what can Mamedyarov do here he plays rook c7 he stops the pawn uh, but now we have queen captures on c3 and rook f to c8 now he will try to play bishop to e8 and somehow win uh, win at least one of those pawns but rook to d1 uh, it's a very important move you guard the d4 square so you don't have to worry about any queen d4 checks in the future also rook lifts with rook to d6 are possible if white if black really goes after that c6 pawn so bishop to e8 and now queen to b3 with check here Mamedyarov blocks with bishop to e7 attacks the queen and now feel free to pause the video and win the game for Sindarov while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on solving the position uh, uh, in question. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, Rook captures on F7. Uh, that's just it. Black's only option is to capture with the Rook. And this now means that we will continue piling up on that Rook. So here we have Bishop to C4. Uh, Black has to defend it. We have Rook to F8. And now the simple Bishop captures on F7. Rook captures in C7. And it was in this position on move 32 that Shahriar Mamedyarov resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, after you, well, there's really nothing to do here. Luckily for, well, not luckily, of course, uh, Sindarov had this in mind, uh, but uh, the, the queen to f2 check king h1 and queen f1 uh, does not result in checkmate because after rook captures, Mamedyarov doesn't have rook captures on f1 checkmate because the rook, uh, well, is uh, unfortunately pinned. So after c7, he resigns because there's no defense. This is checkmate, this is checkmate, everything is just checkmate and uh, well I'm very very happy that Sindarov played this and he showed everyone that uh, even on the highest level in the world chess championship uh, you can employ the Evans gambit and you can take down a former 2800 member like Shahriar Mamedyarov here uh, and uh, I, I still can't believe Mamedyarov declined the Evans gambit yeah, and you can see he accepted it only later on, 20 moves uh, later in the position, uh, where it was much, much worse for him. So even if you don't like playing the Evans Gambit, you have to know how to play against it.
Uh, and uh, well, I, I think more people will definitely uh, study the Evans Gambit uh, after more games like this are being played and after more strong players like Mamidarov uh, are taken down by using the Evans Gambit. Uh, so yeah, uh, and uh, for those of you who still haven't, do check out my tutorial on the Evans Gambit. It's a very short tutorial, only the basics, but it will get you nicely started if you want to crush your opponents. Not like this, but you know, uh, somewhat milder. Uh, so yeah, uh, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Here are the standings uh, of uh, the tournament after 12 rounds. Uh, I told you guys that yesterday I gave you the wrong standings, so sorry about that. Uh, so here they are. After 12 rounds, uh, the leader, uh, Levon Aronian, uh, with 10 points, with sole lead. Uh, Amin Bassem uh, from Egypt with 9.5. Then with 9, we have Parham Maksudlu. And then a bunch of people with 8.5. Uh, Vladimir Fedosev, uh, Sindarov Yavokir, here uh, are the gentleman who defeated Mamedia. Uh, Martin Kravitz, Yanni Pomnishi, Magnus Carlsen, Alexander Grishuk, Daniel Dubov, uh, Haik Martirosian, Ar uh, uh, Arjun uh, Ergaisi, Hikaru Nakamura, uh, Anish Giri, Vladislav Artemiev, Yang Krzysztof Duda, uh, Mahmoud Muradli, uh, Alexei Sarana, Maxim Vashelagrav, Boris Gelfand, uh, Alireza Firuja, and Sergei Karyakin. Uh, so those are the top 22 for the moment, but uh, we still have nine more rounds today, so we'll see what happens. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, do play the Evans Gambit. It's really amazing and, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, I, will, uh, I would like to thank eatfrangos.com, Shirley Chong, uh, George uh, Julian Jiglau Labun, uh, Christian Hogel, and uh, Drew Watkins for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of this amazing tournament uh, until it ends. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And do check out the events link in the description below. See you soon.